Hi, I'm Dr. John, but you can just call me John. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to engage your core, which is more than just the abdominal muscles in the front, it's everything around, but we're going to teach you how to engage your core and what that term even means. By the way, it means pelvic tilt. Swing, swing. And if that doesn't make sense to you, if you didn't know that, then I would recommend watching this video. And I'm going to explain what engaging your core is, what pelvic tilt is, and why we want to do that to avoid injury. I see it all over the place. People not engaging their core when they're doing a core work. Saw it at school, I see it online, I see it in pictures, I see it in my patients. Why do I see it in my patients? Well, when I'm teaching them how to do core exercises to strengthen their core all around, which is going to support their low back because they have low back pain, we find out they don't know how to do that. They don't know how to engage their core. It's something they've never done. So I figure if my patients don't know how to engage their core, maybe some of you also do not know how to engage your core or what that is. So uh, this is going to help you when you're doing your core work. All right? The two main positions that we're going to be talking about is when we're on our back or supine and when we're uh, on our hands and knees or our, our feet and our elbows, like in a plank type position, uh, quadruped, okay? We will cover laying on our back first because it's the most basic. We need a really low angle to see what I'm talking about here. So when I'm laying here on the ground, you might see that there's a little bit of an arch in my low back. Here, I'll lift up my shirt so that you can see better. So this is just me laying naturally. There's a bit of a, a gap there. That's totally fine if we're just laying here. But if our legs are in the air doing like a leg raise, watch what happens if we're not engaging our core. It's a big, a big gap in there. And it puts pressure on our spine. And I'll use a spinal model to show you exactly what's happening. Before I do that, here's how we're going to tilt our pelvis to control our low back. Just like that. Our pelvis is tilted sort of forward. We're going to bring it backwards. We're going to bring our, our pelvis here towards our nose. Bring it this way, this way. Does that make sense? Another way to think of it is here we have the bones of our pelvis and we have our ribs. We're going to try and bring these two bony structures together by tilting the pelvis. Then, when you lift your legs in the air, it stays flat on the ground. And you can do leg raises while keeping flat on the ground. So that's how we engage our core when we are in this position. Now let's look at the spinal model. Alright, so I asked viewers to come up with a name for this guy and the, uh, the response was Pelvis Presley. This is the pelvis. And these are the legs, they've been cut off. But when the legs are uh, in the air, they act as a lever and they want to pull down because of gravity, right? And then what that's going to cause is the pelvis to tilt like this. And you can see how that kind of, that tilting like this, it's a, this is a bit of an exaggeration, but it increases the gap, right? So what we're looking to do is take uh, the, these bones here and tilt it like this, tilt it like this, and then it flattens out a bit more. It gets a bit more stable. If your back ever hurts when you're doing like a leg raise, what's happening is it's getting bent like this. And all these joints at the back are getting compressed and squeezed together. So instead of using your muscles at the front to support your back, you're just hanging on the joints. That's not good. Don't do that. All right, 
Now I'm going to talk about when you're like in a plank position. Okay, so the same sort of principles remain true here, where we're doing the exact same thing. We are going to be tucking our pelvis, bringing the bone here in the pelvis and our ribs together, and we're keeping that tuck position so that we don't get what I call a banana back. A banana back is this, which is the same thing as me being on my back, right? That hyperextension, that big arch in the back. When we're doing core work, we don't want this. So if I go into a plank, and again, I'll lift up my shirt so that we can see better and we don't have a baggy, baggy shirt. So here I am in the plank. We want to be a straight line, okay? I'm tucking my pelvis, tucking the pelvis and my ribs together. What you don't see is something like this. This can be tough at first. You might need to practice in just on your hands and knees like this. Are you like this? Well, tuck it like this so that you're flat. Then just rise up on your on your feet like this. Are you able to maintain it? Then Go into the full plank. So that's how you engage your core. Once again, let's use our spinal model. If the muscles in the front are not engaged and keeping the spine supported, what's going to happen is gravity in here is going to push down. And you're going to get that banana back. And it's going to push and compress all these joints back here that don't like being pushed on and compressed. Before I leave you, I'm going to go over two pictures that I found on the interwebs of two people doing the plank. We're going to analyze them, kind of critique them, so that we can really drive the point home. Okay? Alright, I hope that makes sense. Please comment below if you have any sort of questions or if things don't make sense, I will get back to you. Alright, let's start with this picture of this girl here doing the plank. Tell me what is wrong. Do you see this big, big banana back? Wrong. This is actually not a banana back. This this person is doing a really good plank. I was just trying to trick you. Uh, you you hopefully would have looked at this and thought that the form is good. So what we're going to do is draw a bit of a line here from our head to our feet. Have a nice straight line. She's got a butt. Everyone's got a butt. Hers is a little less flat than my butt, <laughs> but straight line. This is good. Now here's another one that I liked. Uh, very pixelated image. It's a very small image that's been made bigger. The angle is not ideal, but you can see straight line looking really good. Low back, nice. Very good. I like this image. It's a partner exercise. I think partner exercise is really fun. And first of all, I like how how she's standing. That's a whole other video on on how to uh, have your have your, the position of your back when you're like carrying something. She's doing good. And here, this is looking pretty good, isn't it? There's hardly a bend. I think this is really good. Now look at this girl. <laughs> it's a stark difference, isn't it? Look at this huge bend in the spine. Very big bend. Look at her, her core here in the front. Stretched out. It's stretched out instead of being straight. We'd want it to be like, like that. And like that or something, right? This is a really, really bad offender. So now you can see the difference, right? Good. Remember, get the six aspects of health every single day. Earth, air, fire, water, work, rest. This would fall under the aspect of work, exercise, okay? Exercise, super important. Try and get that in every day in some way.